The Lord be with you. Rejoice in the opportunity to be in the Lord's house this morning and hear the word of the Lord. It's the end of the year. Seems like the church is always behind the times, but not today. Today we're well ahead of the times because this is the end of the church year. And rejoice that the Lord keeps his faithful, trusting in his word and his promises to life everlasting. Our order of service, divine service setting four, a couple notes on our service. When it comes to the intro, we'll speak that together. And the gradual, we will speak that together as well. Before we begin our service, the power heads, word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Grace Father, thank you for the gift of this morning, the opportunity to be in your house and hear your word. Rejoice in your faithfulness, your love and care for your church by giving us Jesus to take away all our sins. By his blood we're forgiven. In his word of promise we have life everlasting to live by faith in you. For it's in Jesus' name we gather, his name we pray. Amen. Opening him, 549.
unconditionally sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake gives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ to by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak the words of our introit together. We look forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may ever be mindful of your glorious return. We may be preserved in both 
faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated. The first reading for the last Sunday of the church year is from Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out for me, and I will set justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples, the coastlands, hope for me, and my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment. And they who dwell in it will die in like manner, but my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. We speak together words of the gradual. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highway to Zion. The epistle lesson is from Jude. But you, beloved, build yourself up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt, Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you blameless before presence of his glory, with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, and now, and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, in those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven. And the power in the heavens will be shaken. And they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gate, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away. Do all these things take place? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves his home, he puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in evening or at midnight, or when the clock, or when the clock, clock crows, or when the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess the Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. Amen. 
may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Life is not a TV sitcom. It's not always good, right, and salutary to get the last word in, that final dig. For our words can be deadly driving people further into sin, causing despair and division. But godly words can be helpful by lifting up, healing, by giving the comfort of God in Christ. But our reactions, our offhand comments, are to be for building up, not tearing down. But if we examine our lives, we find we're often hardest on those that we're closest to. We're least patient with those we spend the most time with, that we know as real sinners. In fact, the very people God has called us to serve and love. We have to forgive the same sins 
and bad habits day after day. But don't withhold good for giving words. Don't let the sinful ones have full reign. For as Christians, we do not wink at sin. There's no laugh track for indulging the sinful nature. God condemns evil. Even the smallest hurtful word. Even if others consider it entertaining and funny, it gets a big reaction. The tiniest word can be deadly if it drives one from Christ, who is our life. But our sinful nature naturally tries to put down others. It exposes failings and delights in them. It wants to pit others against each other. We don't have to try to come up with insults, to point out flaws, to think negative thoughts. And this is why gossip is a most pernicious sin and one of the most dangerous in the church. Because it seems so wholesome and natural. We tell ourselves it's because we care. But so often we fail to go to that person who needs our help, our correction, our rebuke. Instead, negative whispers and laughter in the shadows which deprives another's reputation and obscures the precious word of Christ. For wherever sin is not brought to light, it cannot be forgiven by the light of Christ. But, whatever, but whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. It is our Lord who builds us up by removing sins, by giving us a new righteousness that flows from Christ's cross. And so we are to build up one another, not by complaining, grumbling, or insulting. And we have the power of God to comfort one another. Every baptized Christian, even the smallest one, with real comfort in Christ. To give his forgiveness is to give eternal life. We have the word of God, the only true comfort to combat evil, hatred, and sin. But the world has no real comfort, just platitudes and politeness. And so it doesn't know what to say in reaction to heartbreak, serious sickness when facing death, False comfort is often given, which is not trustworthy or true, such as, it will get better. There's always another tomorrow. It's always darkest before the dawn. So much vague, uncertain optimism among people who don't have the gospel. But our hope is beyond this world. It's not in a hypothetical tomorrow, which may or may not come, and may or may not be better than today. In fact, we know death is a certainty. We will not recover from every problem or sickness. But our hope is not in overcoming these ourselves right now, but living in Jesus righteous, to be raised at the last day in a glorious body, our body. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Our trust is in what cannot be taken away. For nothing that happens will undo what Christ did for you. For he died your death for all your sins. And he lives to give you life. For he is your Savior today and for all time, even when this world is gone. For Jesus has the last word. He is the judge of the living and the dead. And he speaks 
to you to comfort you with this life. So turn from your malicious and thoughtless words, from your self-absorption. Hear the words that give true life. Your sinful thoughts, your speech, have been killed by Jesus, crucified, so that you are new to God, covered in his holiness, completely renewed. Only God's words can build you up into a holy house with all of God's saints. For the church of God is people, sinners who hear and have the same salvation from Christ. But building up does not mean telling people what they want to hear. And it doesn't mean they will like it when they say it. Parents find this out very quickly. The kids do not like being raised to be godly adults. But it is to be based on God's work through the Word. To make someone new and righteous before the Father in heaven. But so much practicality rules the day. Just agreeing with people to get along, to not cause a fuss. Pretending that everyone is good and holy when they are not, though, is hateful. Boosting the esteem of sinners who do not know salvation is not good or loving. Instead, we are to turn from human words and thoughts to Jesus who willingly died for you. His suffering is your release. Love is from God's works, not our words. Christian love is to be centered on Christ and what he says in Scripture, not what people expect to hear. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. We're not to tolerate or praise sin, what is against God's will, and we are to stay away from it. So we don't celebrate or take pride in evil. Scripture says, hating the garment stained by the flesh, even the clothing, to detest what has been attached to sin. We are not to love sin anymore. We hate it. We have died to it. And so we certainly don't want to defend it or accept it. That would be to deny Christ, who died for sin. For you have been called out of darkness, out of your sin, to live for Christ. Sin, we know, leads to death. But repentance is life in Christ. We speak not thinking we are better than other sinners, but that we have died to live to God. We have died to all sin. And so sin is not our master anymore. We long to build others up in the Spirit. The encouragement we offer one another is from God. Not our own strength or power. Not our own goodness or holiness. You don't have to be perfect to speak against sin or say it is wrong. He is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. Now some will reject this comfort because it's not for the flesh. It does not make life easier here on earth, but it is in heaven, and it will be revealed at the last day. In fact, the gospel is not uplifting at all for those who live in the flesh, who are caught up in sin, to speak of the righteousness of Christ opposes self-righteousness. But love compels us to save others by snatching them out of the fire. We are to watch for those who are in danger of denying the faith, who are stumbling over Christ's word even if they are very content in the direction they are going towards God's condemnation. This love in words is an act of mercy. In the same way that God rescued us, he saved us by baptizing us into Christ. 
And we are warned continually not to fall away, not to give in to our flesh. And so we can warn others not to belittle them, not to roast them, but to eventually lift them up to God in holiness. For only Christ's verdict counts at the end, not what anyone else thinks. In Christ Jesus, the one who judges came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. This is how the Christian is to think. The Lord cleanses us, even when we are dirty with sin and filthy, because of his mercy. He builds us up, not by just giving us the building plans and going away. He implants his Holy Spirit within us to cause us to want to love and to will what God wants. Being free in Christ, your mission is not to save yourself. You are already righteous in Christ. You have God's sure word of comfort. And you are made strong in order to strengthen your neighbor. Those God has given to you as a gift, not a burden. You are freed from trying to save your own skin. Do not make your own image and reputation a God. Instead, put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So we don't have to point out and revel in every failing of someone else. We repent of our own maliciousness so that we can be gracious to others as our Lord has forgiven us. See, every believer is new, as blameless before God. This is the Father's word to you, his holy judgment, even if the world speaks against us. Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. Speak a kind, forgiving word. But don't be afraid or too weak to call to repentance away from sins, back to God. Being nice and just getting along is not the same as grace. Having that divine justification of our Lord. For we do not have a virtual community built around a singular human interest. It is not what is in us that unites us or what we like. We are all founded on Christ with a holy faith, heirs of eternal life. And we have the same goal, so we are not to pit Christian against Christian in our words or thoughts. We are to have the same mind, the mind of Christ the Lord. So be willing to suffer for others. We are to care for our family and love, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. For there's only one holy faith, founded on Christ who suffered for the world. Only this comfort can cause us to be strong, strong enough to offer a mighty comfort to those going astray, to those suffering. But yet scripture continually warns us to watch out for those who would sow discord, who would speak words of gossip, who would sow division in the church. These are to be marked and avoided. We speak a clear word, the word of God. So we don't need to get the last word in in every conversation. We have the final word, the word of Christ, the judge, and he speaks his verdict to us. He confesses us, his church, his own body. That's how much he cares for us. For we are a holy church, a communion, in Christ, righteous. And our Lord will judge at the end of the world with that final verdict. And his word sustains us each day. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up 
as fits the occasion, that I may give grace to those who hear. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of all mercy and grace, rejoice in the gift of your Son for sinners lifted up on the cross, crucified and risen to take away the sin of the world. Lord, in your mercy, we rejoice in this past year in your church, your word that has gone forth, your gifts that have been given out. May your church ever live by faith in you, counting our time as we live by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Let me ask for your blessings upon the sick and shut-in of Zion, those who are suffering and those who are ill. For Paul, David, Sandy, Connie, Pat, Janelle, Leland, Aubrey, Rose, Judy. Bless over your servants as they bear their infirmities. They ever do so in faith and trust in you, praying, Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, we rejoice with the Zishang family and the gift of a daughter, Naomi. Rejoice in new life given in holy baptism this week as well. Bless over the family, and as they continue to teach their children the faith, keep them safe in you. Lord, in your mercy, we rejoice in the gift of your word. Your promises that sustain the church to raise children up in the faith, to encourage one another in love, and to forgive each other. Lord, bless over your church as we ever live in you and love thy neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Let me ask your blessing upon all those who come to your table this morning to receive the most holy and precious gifts of your son's body to eat and blood to drink. May all those who come forward do so with a true faith, with a truly repentant heart, to receive the sacrament worthily in the fellowship of this altar. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for the boundless love shown to us when you send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, may laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, and I and was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same manner up the supper took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink it all of you. 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This too is often you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you of your mercy. You would strengthen us in the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Lord, bless and keep you. The Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. May be seated.